Fish is an excellent source of protein, and everybody needs protein to build and repair body tissue. Because of refrigerated transportation, a great variety of fish is available in fish markets all over the country. The fish come from the sea and from inland lakes and rivers. Here are steaks from North Pacific halibut. Here are whitefish from one of the Great Lakes, cleaned and dressed for marketing. And here are frozen fillets from North Atlantic cod. In this film, we'll see how to boil a cod fillet, how to broil a halibut steak, and how to stuff and bake a whitefish. Let's watch Mrs. Clayton. She left a frozen cod fillet outside the freezing compartment so it would thaw. A fillet is the meaty side of a fish. It is practically boneless. Because cod has very little connective tissue, it tends to fall apart, particularly when boiled. To keep the flesh from falling apart, Mrs. Clayton cooks the fillet on a plate around which she ties a piece of cheesecloth. This is a convenient way to handle the fillet. It will cook by direct contact with hot salted water. Now the water is boiling, so into the kettle goes the cod fillet. Mrs. Clayton lowers the heat so that the water just simmers. This one pound fillet will simmer for 10 minutes. To make the boiled cod even more appetizing, Mrs. Clayton is preparing an egg sauce. When the white sauce has thickened, she adds chopped, hard-cooked eggs. Now the sauce is ready. How about the fish? It's been simmering for 10 minutes. That means it's done, so Mrs. Clayton removes it promptly. If she overcooked the fillet, it might fall apart or lose nutritive value. Let's see how it looks. Perfectly cooked, the piece is intact. This is enough for two generous servings. The combination of the sauce with the boiled cod reminds us that there is no ground for the old superstition that fish and milk may not be eaten together. From an egg yolk, save for garnishing, golden flakes are grated onto the top of the sauce to increase its eye appeal. Parsley sprigs add an interesting accent as well as precious vitamin A. Properly cooked and attractively served, what a delicious fish treat a boiled cod fillet makes. This is Mrs. Young. She's getting ready to broil a halibut steak for the protein part of her dinner. First, salt. Then a dash of pepper. And now oil, because halibut is a lean fish. A steak is a cross-section slice from a large fish. There's not much bone in a fish steak. Actually, only a small part of the backbone. Onto the rack of the broiler, greased to prevent sticking, goes the halibut steak. It broils best about two inches below the flame. Mrs. Young notes the time. 
she knows that after eight minutes, one side of the steak will be done. Because halibut tends to dry out during broiling, she bastes it on both sides. Oil, melted fat, or drippings may be used. Basting keeps the fish moist and helps to bring out its delicious flavor. She prepares her garnishes while the steak is cooking. After a final seven minute period, the steak is thoroughly cooked on both sides. Mrs. Young is very careful not to break the steak while she moves it to the hot platter. Now, garnished and ready for the table, the broiled halibut has both eye and flavor appeal. Mrs. Dudley is preparing to bake a whitefish. She salts it inside and outside. With a dressing made from breadcrumbs, celery, onions, fat, and seasoning, she stuffs the whitefish loosely to allow for expansion of the dressing during baking. Skewers close the opening and keep the dressing from spilling out. A string holds it all together. Now, the skin is sliced several times to allow for shrinkage that will occur while the whitefish is cooking. Finally, the whitefish is basted with melted fat to keep it from drying out and also to bring out its flavor. Note that the back fin has been removed entirely. Now the fish is ready for the oven. Mrs. Dudley has already heated the oven to a temperature of 350 degrees. Whitefish is cooked for 12 to 15 minutes per pound. This four pound whitefish will therefore require about one hour. Potatoes are baked at the same time so as to utilize the same heat unit. About 20 minutes before the fish is done, Mrs. Dudley puts in stuffed tomatoes to complete the main course of her baked fish dinner. Whether lean or fat, fish should be basted several times during baking. Because whitefish is fat, its own juices provide bastings. Strips of bacon added at the same time improve the flavor of the fish. Mrs. Dudley uses the last few minutes of baking to prepare the garnish, which should be fresh, crisp, and tender. Now let's see. The tomatoes and the potatoes are done. The whitefish is brown and tender. Overcooking it would dry it out and toughen it. Now the baked fish dinner is ready to be assembled for the table. Mrs. Dudley is very careful when she removes the whitefish. She doesn't want it to break. Now she removes the metal skewers and the string. 
The tasty dressing has been moistened and enriched by juices from the fish. The gay and well-composed arrangement of tomatoes, lemon slices, and chicory provides a pleasing and nutritious frame for the savory baked whitefish.